Galatians chapter 5, we've been looking at the fruit of the Spirit. Now, do we need the coolers on? If you get hot, Brad or somebody, just uh, feel free to put those on. been working our way through these nine characteristics and uh, we're we're almost to the end meekness the more I look at these I, I know probably not one is not more important than another but uh, I, I find this a really important characteristic that the Lord wants in our life. Of course, they're all, they're all important. I find it's also one of the most maligned, one of the most mis misused or misdescribed is meekness. Uh, usually people associate meekness with being weak, and it's, that's not it at all. But let's, let's look at Galatians chapter 5. I'll start reading in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. we just stop reading there for the moment. Um, as we look at meekness tonight, um, probably a good definition is gentleness of spirit. Uh, really, it has to do with Strength under control. Uh, meekness, God is able to work through us. He's able to uh, use us for his, his honor and glory. It, it's like the difference between a wild horse and a trained horse. Both of them have strength. But a wild horse is useless. A trained horse, man, that strength is put to use. You know, pulling a wagon or giving, you know, doing whatever a horse does. And uh, meekness is taking the strength God gives us, taking the strength of God, and uh, being able to use it for something good. Now, one of the reasons I read verse 26 is um, those are things Jesus didn't do and Je because Jesus was meek. Uh, he didn't look for vain glory or provoke people or envy people. Uh, look at chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's part of meekness, you know, dealing with others and their, their wrongs against us. And uh, you know, Jesus is the, the first example. Uh, we're only going to look at part of, of this, uh, this study tonight. Uh, what you've got. We're going to look at what you've got there. And really just the illustrations in the Bible. Jesus was meek. Um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, and I think I've listed some of the references there for you. Verse 1. He says, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Now, Jesus is meek and gentle. And we know he didn't lack strength. You know, Jesus, it wasn't, oh, he couldn't do anything. Uh, Jesus is uh, all-powerful. He's the mighty God, the everlasting Father. But his strength was submitted to the will of God. And in, uh, in Philippians chapter 2, it talks about how he's equal with God. And yet, he humbled himself. Uh, he took the form of a servant and, and so on. Jesus was, was very, was meek. I won't, I'll try not to use the word very because you're either meek or you're not, but um, Matthew uh, 11, verse 29, Jesus said this about himself. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Isn't that interesting that that, that, that is a way he would describe himself? I am meek and lowly in heart. Um, gentle and humble is our Lord Jesus. So uh, the, the first example we have is, is Jesus. And that's true of all of these 
fruit of the Spirit. Uh, Jesus exemplifies all of them. And the thing we need to realize, when he says, take my yoke upon, upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, uh, it means we can be meek. <laughs> we can have these qualities, like Jesus has said. I think I've mentioned these verses before, but at Colossians 3.12, he talks about putting on things. And one of the things he's talking about is meekness. Colossians 3.12, 3, put on, therefore, as the elect of God. And one of those is uh, meekness. There, there's several, several qualities he talks about. In uh, 1 Timothy 6, he talks about follow after. It's an interesting verse because he, he first says, flee these things. He's been talking about sin. He says, run away from the sin, but follow after. And then he, one of the things he lists is meekness. It's something God uh, wants for us. It's something we can have uh, from the Lord. Uh, our strength, our, I don't know if that's the right way to express it, but our strength doesn't have to control us. I remember when I was a young man, uh, a program came out called The Incredible Hulk. And every man thinks they're the Incredible Hulk, you know. Because let me tell you, when anger gets a hold of you, that's, that's exactly how you feel. <laughs> You're going to tear them limb from limb kind of thing. Well, that's, that's exactly the way God doesn't want us to be. Giving in to our lusts and, and just looking to our own strength. He wants our strength to be under control. He wants us to be gentle. Uh, he wants us to be humble. And we can, we can do that. You, you can see this in a kind of a physical way. Probably... Probably most of us have experienced a time where we've been doing something and something happened outside of us that made us stop. For instance, maybe you've been in your home having an argument. And then somebody knocks at the door. And you open the door. Oh, hello, Pastor. How are you? We were just talking about you. <laughs> You know, something happens and boom, you, you change from what you're doing. Now, if, if that can happen in that way, surely the Spirit of God can cause us to do the same. But we have to walk in the Spirit. We have, God's Holy Spirit has to be in, in control of us. And it's, it's really important for us to see these qualities that God wants in us and what He's doing. You know, we're, we're going to be tempted to be the Incredible Hulk when it comes to uh, confrontations or situations in life. But that's not what Jesus did. He's the one who had all power. Uh, I was thinking about it today. You, you can't even hardly imagine what he could have done. I mean, he could vaporize us. You know, he could just say a word and our, our cells would fall apart. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's God. He could do that. He could just stop our breath. You know, he's the one who gives us our breath, our heartbeat. Uh, you know, he could do anything. He's all, all power is his. But he didn't. He was meek, he was humble, he was kind, uh, even when people were awful, you know, uh, like it, it talks about it in Peter, you know, when he was reviled, he reviled not again, and, and so on. And we can be like Jesus. So when it, when it comes to the situations of life, uh, I think part of the key here is not that we're controlling our strength, but that God is controlling our strength. It'll be the same next or in two weeks when we look at temperance. Temperance is not just self-control. Temperance is being under the Lord's control. And, and meekness is, is very similar. Uh, our strength needs to be given to the Lord. We need to be meek. Uh, now, why would we put on meekness? Why would we follow after meekness? Well, number one, to be like Jesus. Uh, let me give you a couple of verses here. Romans 13, 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know, a lot of our life is lives making provision for the flesh, isn't it? You know, making sure we're comfortable. Making sure we... And sometimes even providing so that we can sin. And you know, we work it out to, oh, if I do this and I do that, yeah. You know. And uh, God says, don't do that. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's why we would... Um, want to put on meekness is to be like the Lord Jesus. 
There's a verse in 1 Peter chapter 3 and, and verse 4 that talks about the value of this. Most of us like to get good value out of life. 1 Peter 3, 4. Now this is it's a section where he's particularly talking to the wives, but it applies to all of us. Uh, he says, Let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. You hear that? God says a meek and quiet spirit is in his eyes very valuable. Now, you, you young people, you're still in school, right? I hope you are. <laughs> well, there's going to be times when you're not going to want to be meek. You're going to want to get out of control, you know, maybe with the teacher or with other kids. Listen, God says a meek and quiet spirit is very valuable, much more valuable than getting your own way. Uh, you know, I'll, as you get older, my, my problem is driving. You know, people are getting in, in my road and aren't following my rules, and, you know, they should know that I'm in charge of everything on the road. <laughs> I'm being facetious, I hope. Uh, but, you know, you, you know what I'm saying. There, there's just times when, when we're not meek. Well, God says it's very more valuable than whatever we might be grasping for is a meek and quiet spirit. Very important that would be like Jesus. In the verse before it, he's been talking to the ladies about adorning. You know, who's adorning? Let it not be. And he said it's not the outward thing so much. It's, it's the heart. It's a meek and quiet spirit. Now, he's not saying don't comb your hair or brush your teeth. But he's just saying that's not the most important thing. So... Our first example is Jesus. There's no surprise there, is there? <laughs> I mean, obviously. The, the second one is Moses. Uh, the verse I've given you there is, is Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3. And this, this is also pretty much a gimme because here's what God says about Moses in Numbers 12, 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. <laughs> You can't only talk about meekness and not talk about Moses. Now, I will say, there's at least one time where Moses is not weak, not meek, I, sorry. And it excludes him from the promised land. Man, you think he, he's meek, he's meek, he's meek. Oh, he's not meek. Boom, he, the boom gets lowered on him. But uh, this situation here was that his brother and sister, who were both older than him, you guys listening here, young people? Moses' brother and sister were both older than him, but he was the leader. And uh, they were upset with him because his wife had died and he'd married an Ethiopian woman. Now, that's all the Bible tells us about that. And evidently they were upset about that. And what, what it says was, in verse 2, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. <laughs> of course, the Lord hears everything. And God dealt with that. But Moses, Moses didn't get upset. Moses was meek. He, he was under control. He, he didn't worry about it. He just left, left it to the Lord to take care of. You know, a lot of times in life, that's exactly what we have to do. Th things will be so upset. They could be upsetting if we didn't just say, oh, well, Lord. You ever had somebody say to you, whatever. <laughs> Maybe that's what we need to say. I don't know. Yeah, Lord, whatever. Whatever you want. Uh, yeah, don't, don't use it in a bad way, but uh, Moses is a great example of, of meekness. Uh, here they were questioning his leadership. That's hard. You know, when, when you're the leader and somebody's saying, oh, we're leaders as much as he is, he, he didn't let it bother him. He just left it to the Lord. And, and the Lord dealt with it very, very firmly if you read the chapter later. God worked it out. He was submitted to the will of God. And, and let me say this right here. We don't have to apologize for being in the will of God. The problem is, many times when we're determined to do something, it's not always because it's the will of God. <laughs> now, if we can be meek about it, then it's probably more likely that it is the will of God. But um, gentleness of spirit, uh, with, with gentleness of spirit, we need to keep standing for the Lord. Keep standing with the Lord and doing what's right. The one that comes to my mind would be, would be Daniel. Remember when they were supposed to eat the food they weren't supposed to eat? He dealt with it meekly. You know, they, didn't, 
they didn't have signs and march and we're not eating that rubbish you know, kind of stuff. They, he went to his leader and he, he kindly and gently proposed an alternative. And because of his meek and quiet spirit, his leader said, let's try it. Um, we need to be meek. Now, being meek doesn't mean just what you don't do. You know, when you think of being meek, you often think, oh, you know, I won't do this and I won't do that. It also has to do with what you will do. We need to be meek about our stand for the Lord. We need to be meek. Uh, our strength needs to be under God's control to do what we should do. It should also be under God's control to not do what we shouldn't do. Um, th there's a verse about Jesus in Isaiah. Let me just read this. I, I, I think it's also quoted in the Gospels, but I didn't look that part up. Isaiah 50, verse 7. It's a verse about Jesus. Isaiah 50, verse 7 says, The Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Do you understand what he's saying there? I've set my face like a flint. He's saying, this is the way I'm going, and no matter what, that's, that's the way I'm going. And that was Jesus, the Bible describes that as when he was going to the cross. He, he'd, he'd set his face. He, he was going to do that. That was God's will. Didn't matter what anybody else did. Uh, that was what he was going to do. And, uh, you know, when we're, when we're meek, uh, when, we're, when our strength is under God's control, and no matter what anybody else does, we'll, we'll be willing to, to follow the Lord. Um, the problem is a lot of times when we're set our face like flint, it's not because we're meek, it's because we're carnal. Uh, so we need to be careful of that. So Jesus, great example. Uh, Moses, another great example. Man, you can study the life of Moses and learn a lot about how to, how to live for the Lord. The third one, 2 Samuel 16, is David. 2 Samuel 16, King David. This was a time when he and his soldiers were fleeing because his son Absalom was on the rampage. And there was a man named Shimei. Now, let me just read a few verses here. 2 Samuel 16. Let's see. Let me start with verse 9. Oh, no. Let me, let me start somewhere else. Let's see here. Well, let me tell you the story. <laughs> as, they're, as they're leaving... Shimei is going along beside him, cursing at him. We'll read that in, in just a minute. And one of his men, verse 9, Abishai, the son of Zeruah, says to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. Now, he wasn't talking, he was talking, take off his head, I mean, physically. He'd had a big sword, he'd had big muscles, and that's exactly what he would have done. But listen to what David says. Now, there's one side of meekness when you have the power to do something. Like if you're really big and you can beat somebody up, I mean, that's a certain kind of strength, isn't it? And that's what, what David had here. Look at verse 11. David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son which came forth of my bowels seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone. Let him curse. For the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. He was just insulting David. Now David had the power to stop him, but he was meek. He was under control. He, you know, he said, my own son is attacking me. He said, this, this guy is nothing. You know, whatever. Whatever the Lord wants. Uh, David was a good e example many times of, of meekness. Another one comes up in the, the man Jeremiah, Jeremiah 26. Jeremiah 26 and verse 14. Now understand, Jeremiah is a prophet. Jeremiah has to say what God tells him. You guys understand that? A prophet, he gets a message from God, he tells the people. Here's what God has said. Well, they, they didn't like the message that God had said. <laughs> uh, verse, uh, Jeremiah 26, verse 14. 
or let's see, let me go back to the end of verse 11. Then, then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he hath prophesied against this city, as you've heard with your ears. You know, Jeremiah was telling them what God had said. He's prophesying against our city. They wanted to kill him. Verse 14, here's Jeremiah speaking. As for me, behold, I'm in your hand. Do with me as seemeth good and meet unto you. But know ye for certain that if you put me to death, ye shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and upon the inhabitants thereof. For of a truth the Lord hath sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. That, that, that's meekness. Here he is with the message from God. You know, he could have been... Maybe Jonah, in a way, is an example of not being meek about a message. I'm not sure. I'd have to think more about that. But you know, he could have been real upset. I'm just the messenger. Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> you know? But he, he was just willing to be used of the Lord. Now, Jeremiah was, was meek. He was persecuted for serving the Lord. He says, listen, I, I'm in your hands. But you need to understand this. If you do what you're talking about, you're going to be wrong. <laughs> uh, that, that's a hard thing to do. Let, let me give you two more. We'll, we'll move pretty quick here. Acts chapter 7, verse 60, uh, or a little bit before that, is um, the man Stephen. Stephen, let's see here. If you go to, back to chapter 6 and verse 8, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen is doing some great things for God. In uh, verse 12, the, the Jewish people, Leaders didn't like this, and it says they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man seeketh, ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place in the law. We've heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered unto us. Listen to his response. As they sat in the council looking steadfastly on him, they saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. He was meek. Yeah, he was just yielded to the Lord. And uh, they, they ask him, they confront him with it, and he preaches a, a great sermon. <laughs> and then at the end of his sermon, they're so upset they kill him. In chapter 7, uh, verse 60, as he's dying, he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He died. Here's a man who's meek. You know, he didn't attack them. He didn't uh, you know, take it personally. He just was willing to be used, used of the Lord. And that's what meekness has to do, do with it. Our strength committed to the Lord, standing for the Lord. Uh, one other, uh, Paul there in 2 Timothy chapter 4. You can see why I'm only doing half of this tonight. Uh, I wanted to spend some time on, on several of these things. 2 Timothy 4, verse 16. Paul often had times when he was imprisoned or persecuted. And this verse 16 of 2 Timothy 4, he says, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Uh, Paul just showed meekness, both in what he did and what he didn't do. He didn't get angry at them. He didn't you know, try and, and ask God to send fire on them or something like that. Uh, he was just uh, concerned for them. Some of these examples I've given you were people who could have struck back. Jesus, obviously. David, man, he had a guy there with a sword ready to go. And that's a certain kind of meekness, isn't it? When you could really hurt someone, but you say, no, I want to, that, that wouldn't be the right thing. There, there's another kind of meekness where, where you don't have any strength, like, like Stephen or you know, some of the other examples. Uh, you know, he had no way to, to physically strike back at them, and yet he was meek. He was under God's control. I, I read of an example of this. A bus was taken by terrorists group of people in a bus. One of the men was, was pleading for his life. Another man stood up and said, don't plead with them, plead with God. He has the power. 
and he began to sing. And, and one of the terrorists took his rifle and conked him in the head and knocked him out. Oh. And before the day was over, uh, in just a few minutes after that, they shot everyone else. And because he was unconscious, they didn't bother to shoot him. Now, life doesn't always work out that way. Uh, but he was just, he had no strength, but he was just committed to the will of God, to use his strength for the Lord. Don't plead with them, plead with the Lord. <laughs> and it's true, isn't it? Um, the just shall live by faith, the Bible says, not by figuring. You know, a lot of times we try, oh, how can I, how can I work this out? Uh, God wants us to use our brains, and God wants us to be ingenious and, and so on, but we need to be following the Lord. That's, that's the key. Meekness will make a big difference in our life. I think, really, it's the motive behind our faith. Meekness is the motive behind our faith. It's a commitment to the will and to the power of God. Um, you know, as Christians, there's a tendency to let the Christian life become kind of a surface thing. We just do this, do that. Uh, we really need our hearts involved in it. And uh, we see a lot about our hearts by uh, this, this area of meekness. Are we gentle? Are we kind? It's not living by our own strength. It's trusting God's power. Um, Proverbs 16, 19, the verse I've given you there, better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Now, that word lowly is just talking about people that are meek. Uh, in the chapter of Galatians 5, he says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And uh, that's, that's what we're talking about. Sometimes we're going to do the unmeek thing. And then we've, we deal with it. You know, we ask forgiveness or humble ourselves before the Lord. But uh, God can help us to have these qualities. And, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of folks that, that need the Lord. They need to see Jesus in us, don't they? Any comments or questions before we take some questions? Some